Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Asifiwe tena. I count it a privilege um, to be here this morning. My name is Millicent Kaunda. I'm a member of this church. Bwana asifiwe. E, kwa sababu ninaona wageni wengi. I'm a member of this church. Ninakuaga ocha. I serve up country, and up country is just across the, the road at the main campus. But I want to thank the Lord so much for this opportunity to be here. I want to pass greetings from some pastors whom I met this morning. Greetings from uh, Pastor Edward Mulwa. <laughs> and greetings from Pastor Kaunda. Amen. Pia mesema ni wasalimie, bwana Yesu asifiwe. Amen, amen. Those were the people I met this morning while I passed by up country. Amen. And we are doing well there. We have cows, we have milk. We, <laughs> we have chicken. And so, you know this is urban area. So you, when you come there, you can eat some eggs, bwana asifiwe. Amen. And I want to get straight into the word of the Lord. I'm born again this morning. Um, I'm a mother. Jennifer, introduction. I'm a wife. To one husband. And the husband is a man. Hallelujah. I'm a mother of two young adults. And they're all fine. One is at the main campus this morning, my daughter. And we came with my son, and I bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. And so this month of June, we have been looking at a series, Giving. Giving. And I know last week, uh, Reverend Beatrice was handling the topic stewardship. And it was a great lesson that we learned, isn't it? At least I've been able to follow online. And I thank God for what we learned there. So today we are looking at key principles on giving. Key principles on giving. And uh, our key scripture will be Philippians chapter 4 verse 19. We'll be looking at very many others. But Philippians chapter 4 verse 19. What does the Bible say? And my God will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Now, this is a scripture that we love quoting very many times. When we are going through stuff, we quote, and my God shall supply. But we need to un un understand the context in which it was written. And uh, with that, I'll give us an assignment to go and just read the entire book of um, Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. This was Paul speaking to the Philippian church. And he was telling them this particular scripture that we have read. After they had given to the cause of the gospel. The Philippian church was a church that was very generous as it were. And so they would collect, not because they were rich, but they would collect out of the little that they had, and they would give or send towards Paul. There are times when they, before Paul went into prison, there were times when they'd give Paul so that Paul would give supplies to the church in Jerusalem. And so at this particular time, they had made a collection and they had given it to Paul while Paul was in prison to enable him spread the gospel even though he was in prison. And so at that juncture, it came to a point when Paul now is telling them, because of the way that you've been generous, because of the way that you have given, irrespective of lack in your midst, I want to remind you that my God, it was Paul's God who was going to supply to the needs of the Philippians. Philippians. It was Paul's God. And so before we can ever stand and say, and my God shall supply, you need to ask yourself, have you been a giver? 
Hallelujah. Because this scripture only applies to give us. And my God, Paul was telling the Philippians that his God whom he serves was going to supply to the Philippian church according to his riches in glory. So we are serving a God who is rich as it were. We are serving a God who is not in lack. The Bible says in the book of Haggai that he owns silver and gold. He is not a poor God. When we are giving to him, we are not giving to him because he is poor. Bonus if you will. We are giving to him for our own good. For our own good. And I'd like us to look at a scripture here in the book of Matthew. Matthew. I know I might not have given that one. Matthew chapter 2. Matthew chapter 2. This is a time when Jesus has been born. And the Bible says after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of King Herod, wise men, that word wise men in some versions, it is called kings. Wise men from the east arrived unexpectedly in Jerusalem. Saying, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was deeply disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. Uh -huh. Let's go on. So he assembled all the chief priests and scribes of the people and asked them where the Messiah would be born. And as you go on at your own time, in the interest of time, these were wise men. These were kings from the east. And you know east ni wapi? East ni sehemu kama Dubai, Saudi Arabia. You know? That is where east is. And these men were from the east. Scripture describes them as wise men. But other versions also call them king. These were people who had studied the stars. And so as they saw the stars, they discovered that there was a star that was different from the other stars. They discovered that there was a star of a king that was directing them to a place where a king was born. And scripture says that they left. I don't know where people got the notion that there were three kings. Because scripture does not talk of three kings. Bonus if you Scripture only says that they were wise men or they were kings. But we are not told how many they were. And so they came into Jerusalem and they did not come empty handed. When you go on reading the scripture, the Matthew chapter 2, you discover that they carried spices that they were bringing to a king who had been born. They carried gold and they carried Silver. What were they coming to do? We can read verse 11. Entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and falling to their knees, underline that, falling to their knees, meaning worshipping the king. Falling to their knees, they worshipped him. Then they opened up their treasures. Bonasifiwe. <laughs> then they opened up their treasures and presented him with gifts. What were the gifts? They were gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Bonasifiwe. Meaning what? Meaning that they acknowledged this was a king. And when you walk into the courtyards of a king, the first thing you do is you worship him. Then after you have worshipped him by kneeling or by bowing down, you do what? You get into your treasury and you continue worshipping him with your substance. In other words, what am I saying here today? I'm saying the time of tithes and offerings is not separate from a worship session. It is part of worship. 
When you're being told it's time to give a sacrifice, it's time to give your tithe, it's time to give your offerings, it's time to redeem your pledges, it's not time ya kukunja uso apana. Just like you are lifting your hands, and I love the worship in this place, as you are lifting your hands and worshiping, you should actually reach out into your wallet, and after you've reached out into your wallet, come lifting your hands in worship with so much joy as you put the offering in the offering offering basket. Bonus if you will. Now the devil would have it that when we are coming to the place of worship, it is okay for us to come minus our wallets. Just like he, uh, like Pharaoh of old had spoken uh, to the Israelites and he was telling them, you can go and worship in the wilderness. That is in the book of uh, Exodus from chapter 10. You can go and worship in the wilderness. It is okay, but do not carry your cattle. Do not carry your substance. So the enemy wants us always to come into the house of the Lord. It is okay when we are singing. It is okay when we are dancing. But when it touches on our wallet, then it is not okay. Just turn to your neighbor and ask them, did you come with your wallet today? Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Because when we get to the presence of the Lord, it's like Moses said, we are going with everything we have because who knows what the Lord will require of us to sacrifice. Today, who knows what the Lord would require of you to bring into the altar. And so if you left your wallet at home, how will you worship him with your substances? Hallelujah. How will you worship him with your substances? In the African um, culture, I remember just the other day, I went to visit a lady who had gotten a child. So, kushika mtoto. Kushogia mwana. Sindio tunaitaga. So, I went and I had a, a basket. Iza kwetu wazikuwagi kiondo. Iza kikuyu lantini ya kubeba. Sindio, iza kwetu normally an open basket. So I went with my open basket and I'd put stuff inside there. And the lady I was visiting was from central Kenya. And so when she saw the basket, she translated it to mean a kiondo. Buona sifiwe. And this is what she told me when we were leaving. She went into her kitchen and stuck a few things into the kiondo as she was returning it. Buona sifiwe. And then she told me, you know what? In our culture, a kiondo does not go out back empty. Am I right? And I, I realized even where I come from, a basket does not go back empty. Now, that is the African traditional culture. Among the Jewish culture, it was also the same. When women would come visiting and they brought whatever they brought, whatever container that they brought it with never went empty. And that is why the Bible says, give. And it shall come back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. When you're going to see a king, when you're going in the presence of a king, I've already started with principle number one of giving. When you're going into the presence of a king, never appear before him empty-handed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want us to read Deuteronomy. I want us to read the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 16, verses 16 to 17. Deuteronomy 16, uh -huh. All your males are to appear three times a year before the Lord your God in the place he chooses, at the festival of unleavened bread. The festival of weeks and the festival of booths. No one is to appear before the Lord. What? Is that me saying? It is the word of God saying. When you are appearing before the king. And scripture describes the Lord as the king of kings. So uh, principle number one. Never go before a king empty handed. Hallelujah. Now, it's not a matter of the how much or the what. 
Bwana Yesu asifiwe. But as you get there, ensure you have something with you as you go into the presence of the king. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Pastor Alice once upon a time gave us a story. And in the story, she said that there was this king who invited the subjects to come and visit him and they, he ordered them to bring gifts. And so some of them were grumbling and were saying, who you king way to every other time? Tukienda kumtembelea na sema lazima, lazima, lazima. So this time, mimi sita mpelekea kubwa, nita mbebea na kikonte na kidogo. Wana sifiwe. And so those who were grumbling came with small containers of gifts. Small containers of gifts. While others were coming with big mitungis of gifts. As soon as they arrived, their containers were emptied. And the king said, use the same containers to put gold so that they can return with it. Sasa kama ulikuwa mebeba container kama hii. Ndiyo mebeba na yu maziwa yako. Imagine your gold was this much. Yule alibeba a container as big as this speaker here. It was filled with gold. How big is your container this morning? Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Now, like I've said, when you're going into the presence of a king, ensure you carry something with you. Because that thing that you have carried, it may not be a big thing, but that thing that you have carried will kind of place a demand on him because your basket will never go home empty. The Bible says that he is a rich king. And so as we give to him, he will look into his riches in his glory and decide to pour unto you his riches if you go to him with your gift. Now, we also need to understand that the king we are talking about here today owns everything including you. So principle number one, never go to the king empty-handed. Principle number two, always understand that he owns everything. The Bible says in the book of uh, Psalms chapter 24 from verse 1, that the earth and everything in it, the world and its inhabitants belongs to the Lord. Those vehicles that you've always been desiring, they belong to the houses that you desire, they belong to the Lord. The jobs that you are looking for, they belong to the Lord. And when you know that everything that you have within you belongs to the Lord, you will not hold anything. You will go to him open-hearted and open-minded. Everything belongs to the Lord. We are just stewards of the things that we have. The things we call my car. Hallelujah. My house. My business. Now let me tell you something today. You have nothing. Hallelujah. All those things belong to the Lord. And when you know they belong to the Lord, then it will be easy to let go. Hallelujah. It will be easy to let them go. Number three, we have been called to be faithful stewards. We have been called. Now that we know everything belongs to the Lord, we have been called to be faithful stewards. The Bible says in the book of... Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2. I think it's 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2. In this regard, it is expected of managers that each one be found faithful. I normally love the portion that, uh, the, the version that says, it, moreover, it is required in stewards that one be found faithful. 
faithful in everything you have. And I don't know whether you've ever wondered, giving is a principle. Honest was if you Giving is a principle. And principles will work for whoever, whether they are born again or they are not. Sindio? Principles will work for whoever. I normally like saying, what is the area of a circle? Today, I'm in uh, a, a church where people came from school just the other day. What is the area of a circle? Pi R squared. Now, this pi R squared, when you are in an exam room and you are expected to calculate the area of a circle, you do not need to speak in tongues. You just calculate and whoever it is will get the answer. Am I right? Now, that is the same thing with the principle of giving. When you give, it comes back to you. Whether you are a Hindu, you are a Muslim, you are a believer, it will always come back to you. And this is the reason why the Muslim countries are thriving, because they know the principle of giving. Apparently, the Christians, we have still been struggling with that principle. But in this dispensation, DCIKZ, Shiloh Campus, we will no longer struggle. Because we are going to plug into the principle of giving. I remember the other day we were speaking with the people at the main campus and I was reminding them this one thing, that you know what? Prayer does not eradicate poverty. Tell your neighbor. Prayer does not eradicate poverty. You will pray and pray and fast all you want. Fast even a hundred days. But if you do not plug into the principle, you will still remain poor. Prayer unlocks things. And I love prayer. I am an intercessor. I love prayer. But there are things to pray for and there are things to plug into principles. So if you want to come from a place of lack to a place of abundance, plug into the principle of giving. Give in church. Give to your family members. Give to the needy. And this is the reason why the U.S. is thriving so, so much. Because the African nations started believing that America or Wazungu, kiona mzungu, unanza kufikiria vile utanza kutengeneza NGO. Mwana sifiwe. Unanza kufikiria vile utajenga uh, children's home so that you can get that cash. Sindio? Now, when they send their money to Africa, this is what happens. An African called Millicent will receive. And after I've received, I will seriously pray blessings upon them. Oh, God bless that person who gave this thing. Oh, God, may their territories be enlarged. Oh, and God is so faithful. He watches his word to perform it. When you bless somebody because you are a king and your words are like a decree, that person is surely blessed. So they end up being blessed and being blessed and being blessed, but us who are receiving, we are not being why don't we turn it all around and begin giving so that someone can pray for us a blessing? Hallelujah. Yes, so we are expected to be stewards of the little that God has given to us. We are expected to be stewards. Now, principle number four. Four. Uh -huh. Principle number four is that after you have given, assuming you have given the 10% tithe or those who are giving 20 or those who are giving whatever percentages that they're giving, after you have given, assuming you've given 10%, you have remained with what percentage? 90%. You have to be able to account for that 90% so that it can yield for you. How do you account for it? Number one, you must develop a budget. You develop a what? 
a budget. How say me at Kosababu ni metoa i tithe ten percent. I can misuse the ninety percent. After all, God will give me. No, he does not work like that. What does he feel? He calls us to be good stewards. And so develop a budget. Develop a budget. Creating a budget is an essential step in financial stewardship. It helps you allocate your income wisely, prioritize expenses, and live within your means. A budget also provides clarity and control over your financial decisions, enabling you to align them with your values and God's principles. So have a budget. Ambia jirani yako, do you normally budget? Have a budget. Now this budget is what will enable you to multiply that 90% that you are left with. To multiply. Because God expects you to multiply, to be a good steward of that 90% that has been left with you. You have to budget. What are some of the items that you will find in your budget after tithing? The items will be your housing. Now, si jaribu kulive ati unatafuta nyumba that is worth 50% of the 90% that you are left with. Wana sifiwe. I normally see some people who normally say, see God atapeana. Kwa hivo, income yake ni 20K, but anaamua anatafuta nyumba ya 15K. My friend, utalala nja, na mungu bada tabaki kuwa mungu tu. Hallelujah. So you do what? You prioritize. Put your rent. Put your transport. Put your utilities. Yeah? Put your savings. Savings. Zako tuliambiwa la Sunday that you're supposed to save 20% of your income. 20%. Therefore, if you're earning 20,000, the savings should be 2,000 on a monthly basis. And put that saving in a place where you cannot access. Wana sifiwe? Usiweke kwa mpesa, useme sa nime save hapa kwa mpesa. Alafu unapitia mahali, unaona smocha. Umepitia kwa wanjala, unaona smocha. Unaamua, ah, wacha nijitibu kidogo. Wana asifiwe. Do not put it in your empesa. Put it in a place where it is hard to do what? To access. And we have various places where it is hard to access. You can put it in the money market. Unaniuliza 2K, 1K, after 500, you can put in the money market. You can put it in a place like Britam. Money market. I'm talking of Britain because that's where I am and that's where I've pushed. Uh, uh, pushed. <laughs> yeah, you cannot now guess where I come from. That's where I have pushed my children to be. Bonus if you. <laughs> yes. Save in a place you cannot easily do what? Access. So we are saying rent. We are saying transport. We are saying savings. We are saying food and other utilities. And that food, usinunue kwa, kwa vibanda huku. Na usikue mtu wakufanya nini? Usikue mtu wakununua, um, uh, there, there are these buffets that are normally in the streets and in the supermarket. Cook your food, it is cheaper to cook. Tell your neighbor, cook your food. It is cheaper to cook. <laughs> I know I'm talking to young people here today. Bonasifiwe. It is cheaper to do what? To cook. Because you will go to the market, you will buy things cheaply, you will come back and cook, and you will have some money left at the end of the month, as opposed to having more month at the end of the money. Bonasifiwe. So cook your food. Look for a wholesale. Buy things from the wholesale. Look for uh, supermarkets that normally have offers. Like Carrefour normally have offers on Fridays. 
You can buy unga very cheaply in that place. Look for places with offers. Usiende kununua vitu village market. Ati kwa sababu you are seeking prestige. My friend, the prestige will end and you will not have cash. <laughs> we are still on principles of what? Of giving. Because many times we were told that if you give, it will come back to you. But you are not being told how it will come back. In this season, we are here to tell you how does it do what? How does it come back? Yeah. So budget. Budget. My brother, my sister, budget. In your budget, you can also put from time to time, not every month, you can decide after every three months, I'll be buying an outfit, a dress, a shoe. Hallelujah. And when you're going to buy that shoe, look for a durable shoe. Do not use it. After sotano, sotano, after we can believe You know, they look cheap. Am I right? They look cheap, but after two weeks, ikona kishimo kule chini unenda kutafta ingine ya sotano. You know? Yet, you would have spared a thousand or one thousand five hundred and bought a shoe that will take you for the whole year. Are we, are we communicating here? So at times, cheap is expensive. Look for something that is quality. Save for it and buy it. It will help you. Um, it will cut the cost of buying items every other month. Number two, still on the um, aspect of... Uh, of budgeting and the, the number two is eliminate debt. Eliminate debt. Usikuwe na madeni left, right and center. Uko na deni tala. Uko na deni iya safari kominate wa nini? Mshuari. Suju uko na deni wapi. Mpaka when I want to bless you, you tell me, give me in cash. <laughs> you know? Kwa sababu unaogopa nikikupatia itamezwa. Avoid debts. And especially debts for consumption. Ati unachukua deni ndi ununue mkate. My friend, avoid debts. And if you're already in debt and you're here, there is a process you can use to get out of debt. If you must take a debt, Take a debt that will earn you. A, a debt that you will invest and you will have already cal uh, calculated what we call the return on investment. That return on investment should be higher than the interest you are being charged or than the inflation rate. But do not take a debt at sababu kuna dina Unataka kuwana luku moto. <laughs> you know, uh -uh. ati unenda kubai kasuti. A suit is not an asset. It does not bring back a return on investment. Hallelujah. Are we, are we help, being helped here? Yes. So look for a way of eliminating debt. Debt can hinder your ability to be a faithful steward of your finances. Strive to reduce and eliminate debt by commi uh, committing to a debt-free life. This may require adjustments to your spending habits and a commitment to live within the boundaries of your income. When you are in debt, you become a slave. Bona sifiwe. Kama ni mtu amekupatia hiyo debt, unamuonaga kwa ile kono unapitia ile root. Because you have not paid. And people were still, some of the people, what they do is that after they have taken the debt, when that pressure comes, they will borrow from Peter to pay Paul. That is only transferring of what? Of debt. There will not be a time you will be free. So endeavor to eliminate debt. Live within your means. Si lazima ukule nyama. Nyama na beans zote ni protein. <laughs> are we together 
e, zote ni protein and you know what vile nimetokea hapa leo unajua nilikula nini jana usiku is it written here it is not written so whoever ate chicken whoever ate fish and whoever ate beans na dengu wote tukisimama tunafanana <laughs> Bwana Yesu asifiwe. So, do not overspend. Look for things that are cheap and especially currently with the economy we are living in. Look for a way of living within your means. Within your means. For those who by God's grace you've been able to you can afford a freezer and a fridge. Bwana asifiwe. Hata ni heri usikuwe na fridge. Tafuta freezer. Wachana na fridge. Why am I saying this? Freezer siku ile uko free, ume boil gedheri, ume boil whatever it is that you've boiled, you've put it inside there. It can serve you for a whole month. You have saved on fuel. You have saved on transport to the market. You have saved on very many things if you have a what? A freezer. Unaenda pale kwa kichinjio. I can see mothers here. Now I'm talking to those who are married. Unaenda pale kwa kichinjio. Unaenda, unanunua nyama kama kilo tatu, kilo nne. Umeweka hapo kwa freezer. You know, at the kichinjio, it is 450. At the marketplace here, kwa hizi mabucha, it is 600 and what? How much have you saved? A lot of money. Bwana sifiwe. And so, eliminate debt. <laughs> Wanasifiwe. Amen. Eliminate debt. Number three, regularly review your expenditure and adjust. Review your expenditure and adjust. We are still in the principles of giving. Because this will enable you to have at least something that you can give. It will help you to have something you can give. Regula re, uh, regularly review and adjust your spending. Financial stewardship is not a once and done thing. It's an ongoing process that requires regular reviews and adjustments. Regularly assess your financial situation, review your budget, and make necessary adjustments to ensure that your financial decisions align with biblical principles. I've come to a point where I am saying, Instead of me going to Tao for a meeting, I can have an online meeting. And it will still be productive. One has a few I only go to places when I must go. It could be a business meeting. Si lazima tukutane java ndiyo ni mnunulia kahawa. Niki mnunulia once, the first time, and we are still having other meetings, the other meetings tutafanya online so that I can save some money in my pocket. Wanaeswa sifiwe. Mm -hmm. And then cultivate a generous heart. Cultivate a generous heart. Intentionally look for opportunities to practice generosity. You can give to your local church Support some charitable organizations and help those in need. In other words, cultivate a generous heart. But even as you cultivate a generous heart, do not give by impulse. Let that which you want to give be in your budget. Si ukona ile 20,000 uko tunaongea. Unasema hii mwezi the what I am going to give is this 2,000. Offering itakuwa this much. So, asawa. so, from the beginning of the month, you know how much your offering will be on a Sunday to Sunday basis. How could you have a wakati unambiwa and it's time to give you anza kutafuta ume itafuta kila mahali na haiko. You organize it in the morning because you've already budgeted for it. You have budgeted for it. So, even in generosity, calculate and say, this is what I am giving to for charity or as compassion this month. Put it in your budget. Let it not be impulse. Put it in your 
budget so that you can be able to account for your money to the last penny. Turn to your neighbor and ask them this question for me. Ask them neighbor. Jana asubui ulipotoka ulitoka na pesa ngapi? Muulizo ulifanya nazo nini? Kama hakurudi nazo muulizo ulifanya nazo nini? Ask them were they planned activities that you used your money for? While still at generosity, while still at generosity, do not give because you've been manipulated. I know I'm treading on dangerous ground and I'm a pastor. Eh? Do you know what? Then I can see, I can see. There are a hundred people here with a hundred thousand shillings in their account. The Lord is saying, bring it. And then you come running, running, run. my brother, my sister. Let them continue seeing. Yeah. <laughs> you had purposed when you are coming from home, how much you are coming to give. And because you are a child of God, if God wanted you to give that a hundred K, ange kuongele share pahali nyumbani ukuje kama umetoa. Hallelujah. Do not give because you're being manipulated. Because servants of God have come with an, a, a, an idea of manipulating people to give. That is not godly. Give because you have planned to give. Hallelujah. Tithe. Because it's expected of you to do what? To tithe. I know of people who have given until they have given their school fees, of the school fees of their children, because some Nigerian pastors said, give, give, give. My friend, let them continue doing what? Seeing. I don't care what they are seeing. I care what I'm hearing from my father. Yes. Hallelujah. Are we in number five? Number two, number two, number six. Uh -huh. Ni five. Thank you. Biblical giving is a spiritual, not a circumstantial endeavor. I want us to read Second Corinthians chapter eight, verse one and two. I'm just about to wind up. We want you to know, brothers, about the grace of God granted to the churches of Macedonia. During a severe testing by affliction, their abundance of joy and their deep poverty overflowed into the wealth of their generosity. These people were giving even when they were being afflicted. They gave. COVID had hit. They gave. The finance bill had been passed. They gave. <laughs> and I'm not saying it should pass. Uh -uh. Sawa sawa. That's not what I said. <laughs> That's not what I said. Sawa sawa. Because I have challenges with it myself. Very many challenges with it. But what I am saying, if perchance the worst comes to the worst and it is past we will still continue living because we are not being regulated by the economy of Kenya. We are being regulated by a higher economy, the economy of the heavens. And so even though it passes, we will still give because it's not the quantity. It is the motive of the heart. Remember that woman whom when Jesus was seated near the treasury, Yesu wakamuona akitoa two pens. Sindio? There was somebody who had given maybe half a million as an offering or as a tithe. There was another one who came by during that day and they gave several denarii 
But Jesus never spoke of all of them. He spoke of this one woman who had given all she had joyfully. Never try to compare yourself. That is number what? Number seven. Okay, whichever number you have. Sawa, sawa. <laughs> Never try to compare yourself with somebody else. When we are doing the pledges for the cathedral, let each and every person pledge and give according to their ability. According to their ability. Remember at the main campus we talked, we gave an analogy of an elephant and a rat in the bush. Sasa, an elephant and a rat. Si zote zinakaga ni kazi nafanana. Ukiziangalia zote ni greyish. Sindio? But moja ni? Na ingine ni? When they are going to relieve themselves. Azitoshanagi. Bwana sifiu. Azitoshanagi. Do not compare yourself with your neighbor. If all you have is a hundred bob, ata usi kunje hivi, Give it with pride because that's what the Lord has given you. Come rejoicing as you give it. You know, there are times when you have your 100 bob or your 50 bob, but you have sat next to this neighbor who is an old man who has worked, or an old woman who has worked all their lives. And so, you know, and you start feeling intimidated. Never ever get intimidated. Give according to your ability. Amen. And I'm just about winding up. Give according to your ability. Finally, I want to say that biblical giving involves giving yourself first to the Lord. Before you can give of your substance, Give yourself first to the Lord. Give yourself first to the Lord. Scripture says in the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 33, Seek ye first the kingdom of and his and all these other things shall be done what? Added unto us. When we give ourselves when we seek first the kingdom of God, all these other things that we are dreaming of as young people will be given to us. Young people, we normally think of zile um, magariza watu wakubwa, you know, one day I'll be driving that one. Njua kuna machines na kuna vehicles. Sawa, Yes. Yes, and what the Bible says is as you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these other things shall be added to us. And I just want to give us an analogy. I know I can see across, while we are almost age mates, ni wachache sana, ni naona kama watatu, wawili tu, watatu tu pengine, ndio ni nawaona hapa. Now, when we were Growing up, we used to have some, um, uh, an equivalent of kibandaski. Si tunajua kibandaski? Now, in our days, ilikuwa inaitwa kiyothe. Kiosk, kiyothe. Now, <laughs> now you can guess where I grew up, Eastland, Sazawa. Now, in the kiosks, and I remember I was giving the same uh, example there, down there. In the kiosk, ungeenda, Uitishe ugali mandondo. Wangapi wanajua ugali mandondo? You don't know ugali mandondo? Okay. Mandondo, I, I know we know we know ugali, sindio? So mandondo ndio shida. Okay. Mandondo, <laughs> mandondo ni cooked beans. Ni cooked beans. Sasawa. So you'd get in and you go like, uh, nipe ugali, mandondo. Mwingine ameuliza, chapati, ngombe. <laughs> So the waiter, <laughs> the waiter, Mali amesimama, nani chapati ngombe, you know, nani ugali mandondo, then you're given ugali with mandondo. Now you'd eat, and there are times when this ugali ingeisha kabla mandondo ifanya nini? Iishe. Then you would call the waiter and tell them, ugali? 
Ugali sosa. Now, they'd come with a small slice of ugali and add to you at no cost because you had already eaten the main course. Ulikuwa tayari usha nunua. Na umalizie nayo hiyo mandondo. Now, the kingdom of God, when you seek after God and his righteousness, these other things, is it a spouse? Is it um, the vehicles that we are craving for? Is it a good house? They come in kama ugali sosa. Now let me tell you something. It would have been very awkward if you walked into a kiyode, a kiosk, and you go asking for nipe ugali sosa na haujakula wanasifiwe. We give ourselves to the Lord and then all these other things will be added to you, will be added to me. And so we have talked of several principles of giving. We have talked about several principles of giving um, that will enable us to be able to thrive in our lives because us dealing with poverty We'll only, be able, uh, we'll only be able to deal with poverty when we plug into the principle of giving. And we have said that it does not matter the how much. The issue is it is ability-based. Tithe, it doesn't matter. Umeko kipata one tao mahali. All that the Lord is expecting you to give is how much? A hundred bob. Umekuwa kipata so kila siku. All that God is expecting you to give is 10 bob. Wachana na yule anapeana 100,000. Just give what is yours. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. And let me tell you, the Lord will make sure that every other thing is added unto you. And he will make sure he gives you wisdom. Scripture says in the book of Malachi that he will destroy the devourer on your behalf. That's all we need done in our lives. And when he destroys the devourer, he will start releasing strategic uh, ideas, divine ideas your way. I ideas that will help you do what? Ideas that will help you prosper. Because God desires that you prosper more than you desire it yourself. He desires that you walk in abundance. In any case, the Bible says in the book of John 10, 10, part B, that I have come that they may have life and have it in Abundance. Abundant life is salvation. Abundant life is prosperity. Abundant life literally encompasses everything that will enable you to live comfortably. But we must plug into the principle of giving. Something else we have said, never appear before a king empty handed. Never appear before a king empty handed. Handed. And when you appear before the king with whatever it is that you have taken to him, definitely it will come back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I'd like us to pray. And maybe you're there <coughs> as we pray. Maybe you're there. And you've been struggling with giving. You've been wondering, Akakangu ni kadogo. And having known that it's ability based, you want the God to release the grace of giving in your life. You could just lift your hand, and from wherever you are, I'll pray for you. Thank you so much for that hand. Thank you so much. Just raise up and stand. The Lord sees you wherever you are. I won't ask you to come to the front in the interest of time, but just rise up, just rise up. You've been struggling, you've been feeling this income is so kidogo, so kidogo. But you want to begin giving. As they're standing, maybe you're there, but you have also never given your life to Jesus. It begins by you giving your life to Jesus. You want to give your life to Jesus. You can just rise up and join them. Just rise up and join them. Father, we worship you today. We give you glory, Lord. Father, I want to bless you. I want to thank you, Jehovah God, for these dear ones who have risen up today. And Lord, their desire, oh God, is that they will 
give themselves to you, God. Their desire is that, Lord, you're going to release your grace of giving into their lives, our Father, because this is a principle that you watch, oh God, and you remain faithful to it in the name of Jesus. I pray, my Father, for each and every one of these young people who are standing, oh God, and I pray that eternal God, you are going to help them to start small, our Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, that, Lord, that which you have given them oh God that looks so small in their eyes they will give it with joy my father because Lord you will continue expanding their territories in the name of Jesus Christ you will be able to call them out oh God as faithful servants our God and therefore you will put them in charge of many in the name of Jesus I pray that God you are going to reach out to them some of them who are standing are jobless my father I pray that God you are coming through for them in the name of Jesus Christ you you're opening doors for them, my God, in the name of Jesus. That, Lord, they will begin, my Father, operating under open heavens in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And so I want to pray that, Father, you will help them, my God, to do their accounting properly, my Father. For the small businesses that they're doing, they'll be able to do their accounting properly, my God. That they'll be able to have a way of giving in the name of Jesus. Bless them abundantly in the mighty name of Jesus. And be exalted and be magnified in Jesus name as they descend to the comfort of their seats maybe you're here yes you're here praise the name of the Lord you are here we prayed with you because you had never given your life to Christ if you could just rise up again we'd like to hold your hands and walk together with you walk together with you are you there Hallelujah. Are you there? Praise the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, and we honor you. You're there. You have been jobless. You have been jobless. You're there. You are jobless. You don't have a job. You don't have a job. Hallelujah. Just rise up again. You don't have a job. Father, we want to connect these dear ones, oh God, to the places where their jobs can be found in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we know there's a place that you set in store for them. And even as they begin knocking doors, my Father, from tomorrow, we pray that Jehovah God, you're opening those doors for them in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh God Almighty, for some of them, we pray that they'll be able to get calls, my Father, now in the name of Jesus, inviting them for jobs in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I want to thank you, my Father, because I know you're going to place them, oh God, in the name of Jesus. You are placing them, my Father, in the mighty mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The final group of people you have not been budgeting. But you want God to help you so that beginning this day you will start budgeting. You could rise with pray for you. Thank you. Thank you. Shatela Bazaya. Oh God, oh God. Father, I want to thank you for my dear brothers and sisters, Lord. These are your sons, these are your daughters, our Father. And Lord, from time to time, you've been giving them an income. How I pray that Jehovah God, the 90%, oh God, that they remain with, they will be able to budget for it, oh God, and get some money that they can invest in other quarters in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I want to pray that you're granting them wisdom, my Father. You're granting them financial intelligence, our God, in the name of Jesus Christ, that as they continue earning, my God, some are earning at the end of the month, some are earning on a daily basis. Father, you'll give them the wisdom, my Father, to be able to put it in on paper, my God, to be able to budget for their finances in the name of Jesus because by so doing my God they will be able to have enough to save my father, enough to pay themselves oh God and enough to invest in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for prosperity my God their way in the name of Jesus Christ that Lord as we have spoken here today my father coming few years my God they will have seen a difference in their lives financially in the name of Jesus and so I want to bless 
bless you and I just want to honor you today because I pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. May the Lord bless you so much.